All right, so we've arrived at our final lecture of the course. Please try to hold back tears because you're in luck. I've saved uh, possibly my favorite function for last, uh, web service along with filter XML. One thing to note, web service didn't become available until Excel 2013. So if you are using an older program, uh, I apologize, you may run into issues with usability and maybe that will inspire you to uh, upgrade to the 2013 version of Excel. So the example that I'm gonna show you is specifically using the Weather Underground API to pull in real-time weather information. Um, and there's a little bit of setup that needs to take place. So rather than building it from scratch, step-by-step, step, um, I've built this little tool out here. I'm gonna show you how it's built, how each of the components work together, so that you can then go and customize it and build something similar on your own. So for this particular example, we need two pieces of information, a zip code and an API key. And regardless of the API that you're tapping into, you're gonna need some sort of API key so you can get that through the API developer website. Um, in this case, since I'm working with Weather Underground, if you just go to uh, wonderground.com slash weather slash API, there are links to get your free API key here. I think you just have to insert an email address and they'll send you your own key. Um, so that's how you can get that. Uh, this is my personal key. If it's not working, let me know and we can refresh it. Or you can go to the address I just showed you and create your own key. So those are the two pieces I need. And then the web service function itself, all it does is input the URL and spit out a whole bunch of XML data. So as you can see, I've got um, a whole text string with the beginning of the URL, and then I'm integrating the value from cell C3, which is my zip code, as well as cell C2, which is my API key. And then it ends with .xml, so that when you hit enter, it spits out all of this information pertinent to this specific zip code. Um, so this is a really messy, really unfiltered, disorganized, uh, dump of XML data. Um, so it's giving me interesting stuff, it's just not very usable. And that's where filter XML comes in. So filter XML is what allows you to parse through that XML output and extract individual bits of data, like current temperature, feels like temperature, precipitation, conditions, etc. So the current temp formula is just filter XML E3, which is that long, long XML string. And then the second piece is just the X path. And now this differs depending on the API that you're working with. Uh, in this particular case, to pull in the temperature, I use temp underscore F to get the temperature in Fahrenheit. Uh, similarly, for the feels like temp, I would use feels like underscore F. So each of these variables that I'm extracting has its own X path value. So wind underscore MPH is wind speed in miles per hour. And to know exactly what those X paths are, you again have to go to the documentation from the API developer. So back to the web, um, remember we got our API key from wonderground.com. Um, there's another link on that page called documentation. Um, and this box called response fields basically outlines all of the options that I can return. Um, so there's the feels like temp that I was using, and you can see there are dozens and dozens of these options. So that's how I know exactly what the X path needs to take. And sometimes, to be honest, it just takes a little bit of guessing and checking uh, to make sure you're getting them right. So as you can see, I've got a number of different variables that I'm pulling out of this string, uh, visibility, air pressure, I also have information about the location. So I've got Boston Mass, which is tied to the zip code 02215. This is the station ID, latitude, longitude, and then observation time tells me exactly when this data was last updated. So now all I need to do, if I wanna check the weather conditions for a different zip code, is just type it in right here. So if I do Beverly Hills 90210, now it's telling me it's 74.5, little overcast, wind coming in from the south, pretty good visibility, nine miles, and uh, here's the location information. And it was last updated on August 21st at 12.25 p.m. 
So you can type in kind of anything you want here and it will go ahead and update all of this information in real time on demand. So that's the Weather Underground API. Really just one very specific example. Um, once you get the concept down, you can apply this to a number of different data sources as long as an API is available. I'm gonna jump over to uh, a tool that I actually built uh, about a year ago, six months ago, uh, which pulls in accident data from the city of Cambridge, Massachusetts. And I just wanna show you one feature of this tool. Essentially what it's doing is it's uh, mapping out accident locations based on mode of transportation. So auto accidents, cycling accidents, pedestrian accidents. You can see I've got a weather feed coming in which is tapping into that same API I just showed you. Um, but one additional feature here is that you can type in a start location and a destination. I'm just gonna type one Spring Street, Cambridge, Mass. And then when you hit this check root button, what it does is actually tap into the uh, Google Directions API and uses filter XML to pull out the step-by-step -step text directions. And then it bounces those directions off of our raw accident data to identify if this user is passing through uh, some of the routes that we've identified as particularly dangerous based on accident rates. So in this case, if I were going from Commonwealth Ave to Spring Street in Cambridge, it tells me heads up the accident risk for this route is moderate. Be careful on Cambridge Street, especially the intersection of Cambridge and Windsor. Um, so that's an example of how to use the Google Directions API. Uh, this one took a bit more time to set up, including some VBA code but just wanna showcase that the opportunities to use this type of function are virtually endless. So with that, we've wrapped up our bonus badass functions. Uh, if you have any questions about any of these, web service, filter XML, offset, any of the earlier lectures or sections, please, please make a comment or reach out directly and I'd be happy to help you out. Thanks so much.